My name is Stormy Wellington, also known as Coach Stormy, and I blew a bag. So you may know me from Amateur Maintenance Club. You may know me from being a multi-million dollar earner in the industry of network marketing and direct sales. You may know me from being a best-selling author. I have about four different books, three that's based upon self-help and personal development, and one that's based upon my story, my memoir. You may know me from Instagram. A lot of people know me from being the voice of the colored girl. Most people know me by being, you know, a source of inspiration. I am bold, I am unapologetic. So it just depends on what day of the week. There's multiple things I do. I'm a mother, I'm an ex-wife, I am a millionaire coach. I travel all around the world showing people that, you know, they can make money through network marketing. But I also teach people that when you learn to rule your mind and when you learn to train the brain, there is nothing that you can't accomplish. And so I like to look a certain kind of way. So you may know me from being that girl that looks a certain kind of way but speaks differently than the way I look. So I like to make people kind of think that I'm, you know, uneducated. And then when I open my mouth, they start to realize that, wait a minute, this girl is more powerful than she appears to be. So you may know me from your child listening to one of my CDs. I'm all over, you know, Apple, I'm all over Spotify. I have a, a album that's actually doing very well right now. The last regular, I wouldn't even call it regular because people used to always tell me, girl, you got a good job. I used to be a TSA agent. I used to wear that thick blue shirt, those thick, ugly blue pants with a big fat belt. And I was the girl that a lot of you cute girls would come through the airport and throw your Chanel bags up there. And I remember back in those days feeling like a peasant. I remember I used to work at the busiest checkpoint in Miami at the Miami International Airport. We would see about 15,000 people a day. And it's so funny because when I think about that, that was one of the defining moments of my life, working at the airport, realizing that I deserved better when I was making $13.75 an hour. Yeah. So when I was a TSA agent, at first I was excited about it because it was a government job and everybody you know, would say if you work at the government you have a secure job. And then I got even more excited when I realized that I could climb the quote unquote corporate ladder uh, because I was going to be a customs agent. And so I was always excited uh, about the, just the thought of going from TSA to customs. I remember, you know, if, if you ever fly, pay attention to the, to the stripes on, on the shoulders. One stripe means you're just basic. Two stripes mean you're a supervisor. Three stripes means that you're a manager. So I remember my dreams and aspirations was to go from one stripe to two stripes to three stripes, then to go to customs. What really made me have my shift was when I went to work one day and, and some real cute girls came through the airport. And I remember looking at them saying, what is different you know, between me and them? I just believe that they just had a different thought process. And I believe that they just had different relationships. And I'll never forget going on lunch break one day. I went on lunch break and I was just like, I'm not going back. I had no idea where I was going. I had no idea what I was gonna do. But I remember that day like it was yesterday, seeing these cute girls come through, throw their bags on the conveyor belt. I had to check it, I had to do my job. But that day I went to lunch and I just went AWOL and I never came back. So after I quit my job, I was in a tough place. Um, obviously, uh, my income, I took care of my, my two kids at the time because I had two kids, you know, from the income that I made from the airport. So it was really rough for me uh, when I first quit, but I started to really look around for opportunities because I'm really an entrepreneur at heart. I don't like jobs. I don't like being told what time I got to be to work. I don't like lunch breaks. You know, I don't like you know, 15 minute breaks. I never felt comfortable, feeling like I had to hide, you know, when I was in the bathroom, you know, putting your feet up because you took an extra five minutes in the bathroom. And so for a long time, I struggled when I first quit um, my TSA job, but I ended up relocating to Atlanta, Georgia. And Atlanta, Georgia is what began my shift. Uh, when I got to Atlanta, Georgia, it was real challenging. I was staying with different friends from Pillar to Post. I remember, you know, one week I'd be at this person's house, next week I'd be at this person's house. And then this was back in the days where you were able to kind of, anybody could, 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 get, could get approved for a house if you had a social security number. You know, it didn't matter what your, your tax returns looked like. It didn't matter really and truly if you had the documentation, as long as you had like a 550 credit score. And so I got myself a nice house, not really realizing that I didn't have the means to pay for the house. but that was really what woke me up because I started to find other opportunities outside of what I was accustomed to. You know, when you are someone that grew up with, you know, men that was 
either taking care of you, you know, or uh, of course finding ways to get your hustle on where the weather was scheming, scamming, stealing, plotting. You know, it's kind of challenging to find new ways, but one of the beautiful things about being in Atlanta, Georgia, it's like the black Mecca. You know, African-Americans can not only just survive in Atlanta, they can thrive. And I remember working this job where I was able to collect a million dollars in closed accounts and collections. And I remember my boss called me in the office one day and says, hey, your performance out of this world, you bought a million dollars in seven months. And I later learned that those accounts were closed, which means they wrote those accounts off. So to be able to collect a million dollars in seven months and close accounts was, was pretty spectacular, right? Well, the day my boss told me that my raise was 25 cents, that literally became, again, another one of my defining moments. I walked away from that job, I went AWOL, and I got into network marketing. When I made my first check for $5,000, see, what you gotta understand is that nobody around me believed in me. My mom thought I was crazy and stupid. You know, I became a member of the NFL. No friends, no family left. None of my friends wanted to hear from me. I became that girl that like stay away because she's gonna try to sell us something. But, it, but there was one thing that I always understood because I used to be involved in retail. I always understood the power of buying something for wholesale and then having the ability to retail it. I always understood the margin in between was your profit. And so even though I didn't quite understand how everything worked, I understood making commission and I understood the margins from wholesale to, to retail. What was the most money I spent in one day? I would have to say the day that I became a Tony Robbins Platinum Partner. I paid $85,000 that day to become a Tony Robbins, Robbins Platinum Partner. That day was the same day that I had to pay the down payment for one of my events. Uh, the venue was about 30,000. Uh, I was staying in a very expensive hotel. My invoice by the end of the week, because I was at a conference, a seven day conference, was about $8,000. Um, I flew first class. Uh, so I would have to say my most, yeah, yeah, probably about $130,000. Just the other day, I spent like $67,000, but it wasn't spent. I paid $10,000 to my attorney. I had to pay $42,000 for my home getting decorated. And then the next day, um, I had to pay another $85,000 to the contractor. So I don't really specifically look at the money I spend in a day, but I look at the money that I spent over a period of 30 days. My money is more managed in 30-day increments. Oh my God, I treat myself like a queen. I'm a queen, I believe in paying myself first. Um, I average anywhere between, you know, I'm not okay in my money. Um, I treat myself like a queen. I, I treat myself, you know, with the utmost respect. I respect myself. As of today, I would never loan money again without some type of contract and some type of collateral, okay? Um, I do believe in, you know, giving back. You know, that's why I give 10% to my charity account, because I have a charity account. And so once my charity account every month is exhausted, now when you ask me to borrow money, there needs to be a business transaction, meaning you need to tell me what is gonna be my return. Um, I like, you know, 12%, that's my that's my number. Uh, and what's your collateral? Do you have any assets? Do you have anything to, to give me for this loan? Um, I don't do loans anymore because right now I probably have $150,000 somewhere in the world from people that borrowed it from me, from closest friends that borrowed and don't even hardly talk to me anymore. So what's coming? First of all, I just gotta say this, the sky's the limit. Uh, I do women's conferences, so I know that that version of my life is expanding. My goal and my mission is to keep growing as an African-American woman who dropped out of school in the ninth grade, who was told that I wouldn't amount to anything, and I did. I am Stormy Wellington, also known as Coach Stormy, and yes, I blew a bag, I invested a bag, I spent the bag, I bought some bags, I bought some cars, I bought some properties, I bought homes over in Africa where I am a philanthropist, I help people to get a bag, so yeah, we get all kind of bags. We even, you know, have Chanel bags, and Hermes bags, and Gucci bags, and so yeah, we blowing bags but we're best in bags as well.